Hey, what's up everybody? Trofinet here and welcome back to Gwent Edge. In this show we talk about specific Gwent cards or interesting decks to play around with. Today we will be looking at a deck for my favorite faction, Skalliga, and their new leading ability, Blaze of Glory. I call this deck Hit Hard because that is exactly what it is really good at. Hitting very hard. I've been using this deck a lot this season and have been pretty successful on ranked with it, although that might be mostly because it's not something that people are expecting, but I might be mistaken. We'll talk about its strengths and weaknesses later in the video, but you can already check out the deck composition right here or in the description of this video. Let's dive into the mechanics. The main way to start out the first round with this deck is by playing the Drakkar and Priest combo. The armored Drakkar boosts itself by 1 or 2 whenever it loses its armor and then regains 2 armor at the end of your turn if it doesn't have it anymore. Combine that with the Svalblood Priest to its left and you gain 2 to 4 points every turn with just that 2 card setup since the Priest will damage the Drakkar every turn and boost itself by 2. You can also start off with an Uncrate Longship to generate some damage on the other side of the board or use it as bait. You can supplement the damage on the Drakkars by playing Terror Crew Plunderers as well. Damaging the Drakkar by 2 gives you 7 or 8 points with a 4 provision card, so even your low provision units can generate a lot of momentum. The Raging Bear performs a similar role, damaging the Drakkar while having a large body of its own. Losing a Drakkar or a Priest is not that much of a problem either, since you can bring them back with Freya's Blessing. Since you have two of all of these cards in this deck, you can consistently pull off this combo or keep it going. Harold Houndsnout is a more powerful alternative to starting this play. He spawns three of his pals, which deal two damage randomly to an enemy unit when they die. Harold himself can also deal one damage to one of your own units every turn to either kill off the pals or supplement the damage on the Drakkars. Playing Harold followed up by a priest next to the pals can also kill off a 4 power enemy engine if you go first, while giving you a solid lead with the priest. Finally we have the Draco Turtle, which is basically a souped up version of the Drakkars. Instead of boosting itself whenever it loses all of its armor, it boosts itself by the amount of armor it loses whenever it gets damaged. It also keeps generating armor every turn to keep this going, as long as it still has armor to begin with. Aside from being a great point generator when you combine it with a priest, it can also be a great damage dealing catalyst, more on that in a second. Armory is also included in this deck, so you can restart the Draco Turtle in case it ever loses all of its armor. Now, we've talked a lot about how to generate points with this deck, but it is called Hit Hard for a reason. Blaze of Glory is the first part of that. With Blaze of Glory you can select any unit from your deck, chuck it in the graveyard and damage an enemy by the power of the unit you just discarded. There's two main targets for this ability, Skjall with 10 power and Juta with 12 power. With that kind of damage you can easily take out larger threats, but that's not the only way you can do this. This deck is full of ways to deal high, single target damage. Stunning Blow can deal up to 7 damage if your target is armored and is an easy way to take out enemies in round 1. The Giga Scorpion Decoction can deal 6 damage to a single target consistently and for more nuanced control options you also have Hammond to provide some bleeding and moving a unit to the other row. Handy for enemy row locked engine cards. Hjalmar can banish any unit from your graveyard and deal damage equal to the power of the banished unit. This means you can deal twice the amount of damage you deal with Blaze of Glory in one turn if you want to. Handy to take down a big defender and whatever it was defending in one go. Korati Heatwave is once again included to vaporize scenarios or a third high power unit or threatening engine card. And finally Nut the Callus can damage one of your units by half their power and channel that into an attack of equal power on an enemy unit. Doing this on a leveled up Draco Turtle not only boosts it up to full, but can also be devastating to your opponent's board. To supplement this single target damage with one tool to deal with swarm decks, Lambert Swordmaster is also included to deal 2 damage to a unit and all copies of it. Very handy against Deadeye or Harmony decks. There's one more interaction I'd like to highlight here. You can use Sigdrifa's Rite to revive a unit from your graveyard. 
You can do this on anything, especially the Draco Turtle, but if you use Blaze of Glory on Juta, you can revive her without triggering her ability, allowing her to keep her 12 power, regardless of the state of the rest of the board. A 24 point move in one turn. I like to use Kjol as my last card in the first or second round as well, to win with his 10 points without risking him to go down. So in the ideal situation, you end round 3 by playing Blaze of Glory into Juta for 12 damage, use Hjalmar to banish Skjall for 10 points of damage, and revive Juta with Sigdrifas Raid for another 12 points on your side of the board. Assuming of course that you have the targets to dish it out onto, but let's look at a full match to see how this plays out. One of the hardest decks to beat with this deck is Quietel Harmony, so obviously we'll use that as our example. As our opponent starts with a trained hawk, we start with our first Drakkar. A lot of Harmony decks these days employ some kind of poison, so our Drakkar gets poisoned immediately. I don't know how you poison a boat, but uh, there you go. Instead of going with our usual priest combo, we use a Terror Crew Plunderer and a Raging Bear to damage the Drakkar since the priests are usually more valuable in the later rounds. Our Drakkar keeps living on with its poison though, so we eventually do use a priest to keep the combo going, which prompts our opponent to take it out with the Great Oak early. We're down by 16 points, but since we still have Skjall in our hands to bridge the gap, I keep pushing with Hammond. This causes our opponent to pass, which is exactly what we wanted. Skjall gives us just enough points to win us the first round. Now the best way to deal with harmony with this deck is, in my mind, pushing them into using their leader ability too soon, so with that in mind we'll push round 2. Sadly I draw Juta as my final card, so I won't be using her with Blaze of Glory, but harmony rarely uses high power units to begin with, so we should be fine. We'll just need to take out units a bit earlier. We play Harold first, who gets promptly locked, but we use Freya's Blessing to bring back a priest and start killing off the pals that way. Figgis Meluso comes around to defend the masses, but we sacrifice one of our bears with Hjalmar to remove him from the field immediately. And then we get what we were waiting for. My opponent plays the Waters of Brokilon and replays it again with their leader ability. We won't be able to overcome the points generated by these dryads, so we pass, even while we're a card down. As you can see, we usually struggle with Harmony, but we might pull this out in the last round. In round 3, we swap Juta for another Freya's Blessing. Not ideal, but we'll try to make it work. We take out the first Smuggler with a Giga Scorpion Decoction, and take out the second one with Blaze of Glory by sacrificing the Draco Turtle this time. This allows us to show off another great way to end the game by doing this. We resurrect the Draco Turtle we just discarded with Sigdrifa's right immediately for our final big whammy. Our longship gets hit by the Trian Boar but still gets in some hits of its own on the next few turns. Next up we use Freya's Blessing to revive a Terre Crew Plunderer and use her to damage the Draco Turtle so it goes up to 7 power. We then boost it even further with Armory to 13 power and 10 armor while our opponent tries their best to take out any of our units. With no poison left, however, they don't stand a chance. We use Nut to hit the Draco Turtle with 7 damage, boosting it by 7 instead and killing off the 6 power Mahakam Marauder with that damage. We're 18 points ahead, which even Barnabas can't overcome, and we take the game by sheer force. Now this deck is perfect against Northern Realms, Syndicate and Monster decks, since you can easily take out engine cards or any high power units, especially against monster decks. This deck can struggle against Nilfgaard Poison and Lock decks, since they can easily counter your Drakars and Priests, but with the overwhelming damage it is still possible to counter those tactics as well. Harmony is the biggest counter we can encounter, so that's why I wanted to show this example match showing you how to play against them as well. And that's it for today, what do you think about Hit Hard? Got any other ideas on how to improve it or any new ways to outthink your opponent? Don't hesitate to leave advice in the comment section down below so we can help each other out, that's what we're here for after all. 
If you're aching for more, I have recent videos on a Squirtel movement deck and a Northern Realms Mages deck you can check out. Or if you're looking for something a little bit different, you can check out my Art Secrets in Gwent videos or any of my Brawly Analysis videos. Any feedback on any of these videos is greatly appreciated. Check me out on Twitter at, at @trophynuts. that's T-R-O-V-N-U-T, if you want to talk. And if you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? Any support is greatly appreciated. Thanks enormously for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Gwentage. Goodbye and thanks for watching.